Jesus is that solid rock. Yes. My God, my All God, my God. God. Yes, sir, yes, sir. It's simply saying. Yes, yes, sir. Sir. Yes. Come and go with me to Isaiah chapter 9, mm -hmm. verse 6. Amen. All right, brethren. Give me some more juice on this thing. Mm -hmm. Isaiah chapter 9, verse 6. Y'all ready? Yes, sir. Amen. For unto us a child is born. All right now. Unto us a son is given. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. And the government shall be upon his shoulder. Yes, sir. And his name shall be called ah, Wonderful, Counselor, ah, yes, the Mighty God, the Everlasting yes, Father, and the Prince of Peace. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. That's good, Reverend. Unto us a child is born. Unto us a son is given. And the government shall be upon his shoulder. And his name shall be called Wonderful, Counselor, the Mighty God, the Everlasting Father, the Prince of Peace. For a few minutes, I want to talk about born to be given away. Reverend, Reverend. Born to be given away. How long did it take you to discover your life's purpose? Your life purpose is what you believe to be your destiny. Right. It's the reason for your pursuits and the motivating fire behind your dreams and aspirations. Come on down. Some discovered their life's purpose when they were young and spent a lifetime pursuing their destiny. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Others found their purpose later on in life. Mm -hmm. Unfortunately, there are many mature adults who have not found their life's purpose ah. and have wasted many years going around in circles. Let me tell you something, without a purpose or a goal, everything we do is meaningless. Yes, sir, yes, sir. And as he rises early in the morning, runs, works out, watches his diet and builds strength and endurance because he wants to win a, a competition. In goal explains the exercise regimen and sacrifices. Right. A student focuses on studies and spends a large amount of time reading and writing and studying to prepare for a career as a doctor, a nurse, attorney, or professional. Yes, sir, right. yes, sir. The goal explains the long hours of study and practice. Right. If we don't have a goal, then everything we do seems like a never-ending cycle of useless activity. Right. And it goes nowhere but to a dead end. Right. Martin Luther King Jr. once said that if a man has not discovered something he is willing to die for, right. then he is not fit to live. Right. That means that each of us is searching to find a purpose for which we were placed on this earth. Yeah. And once we discover that truth, oh. we should be willing to lay down our lives that to achieve right? this end. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Christ gave us the ultimate example uh -huh. when he came to this earth, yeah. willing to die for people who would not return the favor. Uh -huh. He died so that we might live. Right. Now, our goal should also be to have something to live for. Yes, sir. Yes, and sir. And not so much that we are willing to die to achieve it. As Christians, we desire to do God's will. Yeah. We know that there is a higher calling than one that is self-oriented. Yeah. We are called to serve him. Yeah. It is something to live for and something to die for as well. Living a life is pleasing to God defines our daily walk. And if you ain't trying to please God, you might as well stay in the bed. Stay Reverend. Our desire and our purpose ought to serve God. In everything we do and everything we say, making sure that in heaven is our goal. Our text for this first Sunday. In Advent focuses on the prophet Isaiah right. as he gives the world a snapshot of the birth, life, and death of Christ. Yeah, yeah. And explain how he would be born 
so that he would be given as a sacrifice for the sins of mankind. Isaiah 9 and 6 looks at how God revealed the cradle experience of Christ. Yeah, yeah. The circumstance of the birth of Christ was predicted well before his birth. Yeah. In Isaiah 7 and 14 we are told, Therefore the Lord himself shall give you a sign. Behold, the virgin shall conceive and yeah. bear a son. Yeah. And shall call his name Emmanuel. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. In chapter 9, we are given more details of his cradle experience. We are told what he shall be called. He shall be called Wonderful Counselor, the Mighty God, the Everlasting Father, and the Prince of Peace. Isaiah 53 2, we are told that. In his cradle experience, yeah. he would be born into a humble circumstance, but rejected by men. Uh -huh. Isaiah 53 refers to the cross experience. Uh -huh. It is the point in time which Christ would suffer physical humiliation, yeah. pain, agony, and death to provide for the salvation of, of mankind. Yeah. In other words, by his stripes,
to change it and to challenge it to improve. Secondly, every life has an underlying thing. Every life has an underlying thing that explains its direction. The theme of your life defines your actions, explains your motivations, and makes you easier to understand. Your life theme is connected to your purpose. A person whose theme is to help improve the world in any way is subject to volunteer to feed the homeless, build a habitat home, or raise money for the Salvation Army. But if a person's life theme is to be famous, they will only volunteer or build on that house or work for the Salvation Army to get publicity or to get a pat on their own back. The underlying theme of our spiritual lives reflects the style, the method, or means by which we pursue our purpose. When we have a theme, we insist that everything we do and say is consistent with our purpose. Yeah, 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 yeah. I don't know how you feel about it, but sometimes life gets ugly. Yeah. When what we say and do conflicts with our stated purpose in life. It is confusing when we praise God one day and act a fool the next day. It's really confusing when we drink communion wine on Sunday and drink malt liquor the rest of the week. Some confusing signs indicate that we have a conflicting spiritual thing. As believers, we are not a life thing that is consistent with our personality. When we know our purpose, yes, we yes, have sir. a consistent life thing that helps us achieve what we see as our life's purpose. Jesus had an unassuming and straightforward style about his life. Yes, sir. From his humble birth in Bethlehem to his crucifixion on Calvary. He remained true to his calling to show the world that God loves us and wants to redeem us unto himself. The underlying theme of his life was truth, obedience to God, and sacrifice, which he demonstrated by his death, burial, and resurrection. Third thing I need y'all to know is that your life purpose is achieved when it is given. The great men and women of history are remembered most because they gave their lives in service to a great cause. What do they have in common, preacher? George Washington, Abraham Lincoln, Frederick Douglass, Harriet Tubman, and all had one thing in common. They gave their lives to a cause greater than themselves. To achieve our life's purpose, we must keep our eyes focused on the prize that is larger than life itself. Thousands of humanitarians spend their lives attempting to bring peace to the world. Scientists work day and night to find cures for diseases. Social reformers work to improve conditions for the poor and downhearted. To give up yourself means that you see a leak in the dam and you rise to put your finger in the hole until something else can take place. Christ spent his life, really got too much stuff up here. Christ spent his life providing eternal life for us all. He came as a baby with a purpose. They have been many babies. I lost so much Jesus, who was born to die and die 
I took it up again. Jacob and Esau were twins. Both became fathers of great nations. They were born with a mission. But their mission was small when we think about Jesus. Yes, yes. Moses was born in slavery, but rose to become a prince of Egypt and a deliverer for his people. Yes. His mission was small when we think about Jesus. John the Baptist was born with a mission to be one crying out in the wilderness. Well, pick ye, for the kingdom of heaven is at hand. His purpose was small when we think about Jesus. Down in Bethlehem, a child was born. And his mission was given to be the salvation of the world. And somebody ought to be glad about it. Are you glad? God wants us to know that we have something to live for. Yes, sir. See, we live to worship God in spirit and in truth. We serve a God who has given us an example. He was born to live and he lived and died to save our souls. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Prophets made it clear that the child born in Bethlehem would be the Savior. But it was also clear that he would give himself for the world. About 700 years before he was born. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Isaiah said he would be wounded for our transgressions and bruised for our iniquities. This child was born to be given away. Long before he was born, the, the, the Isaiah announced, therefore, the Lord himself shall give you a sign. For all the virgin shall conceive and bear a son and shall call his name Emmanuel. About 600 years before his birth, ah! Jeremiah cried out, Behold, the days come, saith the Lord, and I will raise unto David a righteous branch, and a king shall reign and prosper, and shall execute judgment and justice in the earth. This child was born to be given away. This child was born with a mission. Just like the Christ child, every believer is born with a purpose. God has ordained you and equipped you with the tools for your task before you are born. Believer's life is born to be given in service to the Lord. Songwriter put it this way, if I can help somebody as I pass along, if I can cheer somebody with a word or song, that my living will not be in vain. Down in Bethlehem, a little child was born with a mission. His mission was to bring hope to the disillusion and salvation to the lost. He was supposed to bring a life and provide it more abundantly. He brought peace on earth and goodwill toward me. He brought comfort in the midst of calamity and strength in the time of weakness. He came to bring assurance in the midst of our agony and power in the midst of our problems. He came to bring safety in the time of trouble and shelter in the time of the storm. Are you glad yet? Jesus, who was born 
in a state. And he raised in a manger. We must tell the world that he was born to be given away. For the salvation of the world. We must tell the world that he carried the old rugged cross upon time. Because he had someone to die for. But he got up early at some moment. Because he had something to live for. Are you glad that? Yes, he was born to be given away. He came to be the living of the dead. He came to be the life of the world. He came to be a bridge over trouble water. He came to be bread and starving land. He came to be water in dry places. 